a very good morning to all the viewers this is padma mahapatra today let us start with our second lesson in history that is early humans so today we are going to start with a new chapter that is a second lesson in history for class 6 students we are going to start with early humans so before i could proceed with today's class i would like i would like to request all the students to please open your textbooks and keep it in front of you please open to the page where you have the lesson early humans so shall we proceed with today's class children before i could proceed with today's class what does this name indicate or suggest early humans is a lesson something concerned about the evolution of man or how man came into existence or the different stone ages in this chapter we are going to study about the evolution of man that is early human and the different stone ages right the different stone ages are again divided into four old stone age new stone age sorry old stone age middle stone age new stone age and copper stone age so let me start and proceed with today's class wherever required i shall tell you or mention please do underline the important points so i expect all the students to simultaneously follow the chapter with me so let us proceed shall we i hope all of you are ready with your books so early humans the earliest human beings were known as they were known as who hominids so the early human beings were known as hominids they belonged to the family of primates who are primates they were ape like animals do you think when early man came into existence did he look or appear like us no way there was no chance he was looking more of an ape do you understand what's an ape not exactly a chimpanzee but somewhat he used to look in his appearance he used to resemble somewhat like a chimpanzee why because he was more bent forward and he used to walk on four limbs what are limbs two hands and legs we call it as limbs so earlier men they were called as hominids and they belong to the family of primates which were ape like animals means he was more bent towards the front or forward and he used to walk on his four limbs two hands and legs he had a lot of hair growth all over his body so he was more of like that so over a period of time man went across various changes and finally he resumed this form like you see men today so the early humans were known as who are what hominids they belong to the family of primates who are primates they were ape like animals ape means more like a monkey or resembled more of a chimpanzee over a period of time hominids developed into homo erectus please do underline this i want you to underline the earliest human beings were known as whom hominids do underline this line children over a period of time hominids developed into what homo erectus human beings what do you understand by the term erectus erect means straight upright because early man looked more like an ape he was bent forward and used to walk on four limbs not on two limbs or his two legs he was more like an ape but over a period of time these hominids turned into homo erectus erectus means straight upright gradually man learned to stand up to stand straight and upright right so that is the meaning of erectus homo erectus men could walk erect that is straight and see in all directions what if you bend forward can you look behind or turn around no way but when man became homo erectus he started to stand straight and walk straight then he could move around his head and see in all directions so over a period of time the early human beings who were called as hominids right 
they were turned into homo erectus homo erectus men could walk erect that is straight and see in all directions homo erectus were the who first human beings underline this homo erectus were the first human beings who lived where in which continent in africa homo erectus were the first human beings who lived in africa of all the homo erectus men of this period the java men point to be noted the peking men and the high heidelberg men were the most notable so out of all the homo erectus there are many names mentioned in your book out of all of them who are the most important first one the java men the peking men and the heidelberg men were the most notable could you understand so let me proceed shall we move ahead right so i'm moving on now let us study in detail about java men peking men and heidelberg men so who are java men the java men belong to where indonesia they were more similar to apes rather than the present day men they could not speak but knew how to make stone tools so what are the important characteristics or features of the java men as you can see java men belong to which part they were from indonesia they resembled they did not look like the present day men they resembled more of an ape and they could not speak but they knew how to make stone tools weapons and equipments now moving on to the second category that is the peking men the peking men lived in where in the caves of china they lived in the caves of china do please underline this and could stand more upright than the java men they could stand more upright means the java men did not look like the present day men they looked more like apes they were bent forward right and the java men belong to indonesia whereas the peking men where they belong to china they lived in caves of china but they could stand upright that is straight than the java men so right now let us move on to the heidelberg men the heidelberg men the heidelberg men lived in germany they had a larger brain they could use more of their brain more of their senses they had a larger brain the heidelberg men underline this children were probably the first to develop the power of speech in the world let me tell you the java men they could not speak but when coming to the heidelberg men where did they live they lived in germany the heidelberg men were more probably the first they were probably the first to develop the power of speech and they used their larger brain so who developed the power of speech it is the heidelberg men did you underline all the points that were mentioned or noted so now let us start with stone age as the name suggests what do you understand the stone age age refers to the period stone age refers to the period when there were no metals metals were not in use so it refers to the period where mainly their equipments weapons and tools were made out of stone the period or the age when there were no metals all the equipment tools and weapons that were made out of stone were called as stone age right so let me proceed stone age the stone age was divided into four broad categories on the basis of different kinds of stone implements used during this period so the period between 5 lakh bc to around see it is not exact it is given approximate what does around suggest around means approximate so what is the period of the stone age the stone age dated from the period between 5 lakh bc to around 2000 bc is known as stone age so how many stone ages are there stone ages can be broadly categorized 
are divided into four parts. The first one, the Paleolithic age or it is also called as Old Stone Age. It is dated from 5 lakh BC to 10,000 BC. Children, let me repeat. It is not 10,000 BC to 5 lakh BC, but it is from 5 lakh BC to 10,000 BC. Why? Because in the previous class, in my first class, I mentioned you that in BC, that is the era before Christ, we count what? Backward. That is 100 BC comes first, then 99 and then 98 BC. In a similar way, so we will not say 10,000 BC, but what comes first? 5 lakh BC to 10,000 BC. Next, the Mesolithic Age or the Middle Stone Age. It dates from 10,000 BC to 8,000 BC. The Neolithic Age or New Stone Age that is from 8,000 BC to 4,000 BC. The Chalcolithic Age or we can also call this Copper Stone Age is from 4000 BC to 2000 BC. So the Stone Age begins from where? From 5 lakh BC and it ends at 2000 BC. So what is the period of the Stone Age? It dates from, as you can see on the screen, from 5 lakh BC to 2000 BC. So the Stone Age dates back from 5 lakh BC to around approximate 2000 BC. So children, what are the four Stone Ages? Stone Ages is divided into four. The Paleolithic or the Old Stone Age, the Mesolithic or the Middle Stone Age, the Neolithic or the New Stone Age, the Chalcolithic or the Copper Stone Age. Hope you could understand and children you need to remember the periods as well or the dates as well. So shall we proceed? Now we shall study each of these stone ages in detail. Now we will proceed on to the Paleolithic age. So let us see what is the Paleolithic age about. So let me tell you or let me mention the Paleolithic Age, the Paleolithic Age is the longest Stone Age of all the four Stone Ages, the Old, the New, sorry, the Old, the Middle, the New and the Copper Stone Age. Out of all the four Stone Ages, the Paleolithic Age is the longest Stone Age. I repeat, please do underline, point to be noted. It can appear for your objective type questions. Which is the longest stone age or dash is the longest stone age? What will you write? The Paleolithic age. So now let us study about the Paleolithic age or it is also called as old stone age. It is a Greek word. Paleolithic is a Greek word. The term Paleolithic has been derived from a Greek word. What? Paleo means old. And lithos means what? Stone. Paleo, though it is Paleolithic can be split up into two parts. Paleo and lithos. Paleo means old, lithos means stone. So it is a Greek word. Paleolithic refers to or means old stone age. Thus, Paleolithic age means old stone age. Some of the main features or the important features of the old stone age are as follows. Paleolithic age was the what? As I told you, longest stone age. The early men of this age used simple, crude. Crude means what? They used simple or crude. Crude means not refined, not polished. Crude means unpolished, not refined. So the early men of this age used simple, crude or unpolished what tools? M tools made out of metal. What are we studying? Stone Age. So they used, there were no metals used during this period. So the tools were made out of stone. Rather, they were crude, they were unpolished stone tools. The men in this age were basically what? Hunterers and food gatherers. At this time, man did not know 
how to do farming or there was no agriculture they were basically hunters or food gatherers so what can you understand by this means they used to used to feed themselves or survive by hunting and gathering or collecting food that means they lived more of a nomadic life the early men lived in the open or near the banks of rivers they lived in the open under the shade of trees on the branches of trees or they lived near the banks of river but did not have a, a pakka settlement or a house to dwell in discovery of the fire was the greatest achievement of the early men so what was the important achievement of the paleolithic age what was discovered during the paleolithic age children please do mark or underline fire was invented or fire was discovered during the paleolithic age it is believed that a lightning or a thunder must have struck a thunder or a lightning must have struck and they it must have sparked a fire it must have sparked a fire and the woods might have caught the woods might have caught fire or they could have catch fire right so then man probably came to knew about the existence of fire and this is what the logic that is believed that this must this was how fire must have been invented this was how fire must have been invented and slowly and gradually man came to know the use of fire or the benefits of fire till then he was not aware of an element called fire fire is an important element right he did not know but most probably a thunder or a storm must have struck right a thunder or a lightning or rather lightning and it must have ignited a spark or a fire then man came to know about the uses or the benefits of fire like fire can be used to make them warm fire can be used to light up their caves where they lived a fire probably could be used to scare away the wild animals that approach them a fire could also be used for roasting food or rather they did not cook food point to be noted they did not know the sophisticated sophisticated ways of cooking food they probably ate the raw meat or after the invention of fire they learned to roast the meat or roast the food so what were the uses of fire they discovered as the time passed by they discovered that fire could be used to scare away wild animals fire could keep themselves warm fire could be used to light up their caves and fire could be used to roast their food or meat so what is the important achievement of this period it is fire was invented during which period the paleolithic age or the old stone age so now let us proceed on to his social life in order to protect themselves from the wild animals as i already told you or mentioned you the early men began to live in groups living in a group was the beginning of a man's social life each group was considered a small tribe and had its own chief so children what is society what society is nothing but you and me we all together constitute a society me you we all so me you means man man is the basic unit of a society so what were, what about the social life of man during the old stone age or the paleolithic age in order to protect themselves from wild animals what did they do the early man began or started to live in groups or rather they started forming a society so this was the beginning of social life of man each group was considered a small tribe and each group had its head or chief now moving on to clothing early men did not know anything about clothes they were rather nude or naked or they covered themselves or their bodies with the bark of trees leaves or animal skin the men of the old stone age did not wear any clothes they covered their bodies with bark of trees leaves and animal skin so this was just to protect themselves from the harsh weather 
or the climatic conditions from the cold and heat they just covered their bare bodies with leaves and you know bark the bark of trees and and they used animal skin they did not know anything about clothing at that time right speech ability the earliest men could not speak properly they knew only some growl, growling sounds what are growling sounds we say a lion roars when the speech is not clear it comes out in a growling way right so probably early men did not know how to speak he knew or he could make only a few growling sounds their speech ability was very limited to a limited vocabulary means they could not use what is vocabulary they could not use many words rather people of the now we are studying about what the old stone age or the paleolithic age so people of that age the earliest men could not speak properly means clearly their speech ability was limited to making growling sounds only not a clear voice or words in the paleolithic age their ability to speak developed so the ability of speech developed during which age children please underline the ability to speak developed during the paleolithic age but their vocab the ability to speak developed but it was not very refined rather their vocabulary was very limited or curtailed is that clear so this is about the speech ability now moving on to art now moving on to art so the early men were what the men of the old stone age or the paleolithic age were skillful artists they were excellent brilliant skillful talented artists why because they painted pictures of animals mother goddess hunting scenes their social life and other activities like gathering food hunting etc so what all were painted just remember early men of the old stone age or the paleolithic age were excellent artists or brilliant or skillful artists because they painted on the walls of caves what did they paint they painted the everyday scenes like they used to hunt hunting scenes they used to gather food gathering of figures of mother goddess this tells us that people of that age also worshiped or believed in idol worship of mother goddess bhim betaka please do underline bhim betaka adamgarh pratapgarh and mirzapur in india are some of the famous sites depicting cave paintings of the paleolithic age this can appear for match the follow following or give two examples give two examples or two sites of that depict the painting of the paleolithic age name any two sites that depict the paintings of the paleolithic age what are they bhim betaka pratapgarh and adamgarh just underline some of the easier and the simpler ones so that you can easily remember and recall during exam so these are the important sites of the paleolithic age now with this let us move on to the mesolithic age or the middle stone age the mesolithic age lasted for a much shorter point to be noted a shorter period or a smaller duration of time as compared to the old stone age so mesolithic means middle stone age it lasted for a very smaller or a shorter period of time as compared to the old stone age right so it existed from the period of about 10000 bc to 8000 bc you need to underline and remember this mesolithic age is popularly called as the period of what transition so it will appear like this in your exam dash is known as the period of transition what mesolithic age or mesolithic age is also called as the period of dash what period of transition it can come either way so please underline so children now 
what do you understand by the word transition transition means change change from what change from old stone age to new stone age or a period of change from paleolithic age to the neolithic age so the mesolithic age joins the mesolithic age what joins connects or bridges the gap between the old stone age and the new stone age that is the paleolithic age and the neolithic age therefore it is popularly called as the period of transition or the period of change right Mesolithic age is popularly called as a period of transition from where the Paleolithic age to the Neolithic age that is from the old stone age to the new stone age now let us study about the main features of the Mesolithic age so what are the main features climate changes or climatic changes earlier it was called as ice age everything the earth most most of the surface of the earth majority of the surface of the earth was covered with a snow cap or ice so rather it was called as ice age but gradually with the passage of time when it came around we came around to 10000 bc to 8000 bc that is it dates back to the mesolithic age or during the middle stone age what happened there was some uh, drastic uh, drastical changes a uh, drastical changes took place or some changes came about in the weather or the climatic conditions what were the changes the earth started to become more and more warmer and drier as the climate became more and more warm and dry what happened the surface or the layer of ice on the earth surface started to melt the earth surface became more warmer so new plants started new plants started to grow that bear grains grains like grains of rice wheat barley and so on so what is the major change in the mesolithic age the climatic changes the earth became more warmer see climate changes in this age climate became warmer and drier than earlier so what happened this resulted in what in positive changes in favor of man in favor of the earth or in favor of man these changes resulted in a positive way resulted in positive changes in the environment of the earth with the growth of seed bearing plants what are seed bearing plants like wheat barley and rice we tried rice wheat are all called grains so what happened with the change in climate positive changes took place in the environment of the earth so what started growing many seed bearing plants like rice wheat and barley okay started growing and men started eating their seeds as food slowly they learned to grow them as crops so now point to be noted children the most important one by the end of this age they were on the road to civilization having discovered a new aspect of life known as agriculture children fire was discovered during paleolithic age or old stone age so what was discovered during the mesolithic age or the middle stone age so for agriculture was discovered towards the end not in the beginning no point to be noted towards the end of the middle stone age they started to grow crops or probably agriculture was invented but agriculture became the main occupation not during the mesolithic age but it became the main occupation in the next age that is the new stone age or the neolithic age i hope you are understanding children are you able to follow no doubt towards the end of the mesolithic age or middle stone age agriculture was invented with the changes in climate or there were seed bearing plants man started so children i repeat again 
point to be noted what fire was invented during the paleolithic age or the old stone age whereas agriculture was discovered during the mesolithic age or the middle stone age but it became the main occupation when in the next age that is the neolithic age or the new stone age no doubt agriculture was invented towards the or discovered during the end or the last of the middle stone age but it became the main occupation not during the mesolithic age it was invented in mesolithic but it became the main occupation in the neolithic age or the new stone age so let me proceed so let me proceed so now let us see about the food habits of people during the middle stone age or the mesolithic age in the beginning of this age people were what hunters and food gatherers like they were in the old stone age we studied during the old stone age people led more of a nomadic life they went about hunting animals for food and gathering or collecting food so in the beginning of this middle stone age also they led their life or more like a nomadic or collected food by hunting and gathering food wherever they went like in the old stone age but towards the end of this age which age that is middle stone age or the mesolithic age they learned about growing crops and cultivating fields they learned the art of agriculture towards the end of this age thus agriculture became their major occupation when underline point to be noted it became their major occupation in the next age that is the neolithic age or the new stone age now moving on to shelter although people started living in the houses in this age most of them still lived in caves and rock shelters so early men used to live on the banks of rivers under the shade of trees on the branches of trees but people during the mesolithic age started to live in where live in caves but people started living in sorry sorry i repeat started living in houses but in but most of them still continue to live in caves and rock shelters so children this is a very lengthy lesson don't get me wrong i cannot teach you at a stretch it will be very difficult to conceive the uh, conceive or grasp the concept for you to digest so i have divided this chapter into two parts that is in today's class i would be teaching about the paleolithic age or the old stone age then the mesolithic age or the middle stone age in the following class the video i shall upload very soon within a couple of days okay and the second half of the chapter we shall study in the next class or the following class that is the what new stone age the neolithic age and the copper stone age or the chalcolithic age so that's all for today in today's class we studied about what the old stone age paleolithic age and the mesolithic age and we studied about early man right so let me please sum up or conclude today's class let me capsulate put it in a capsule form in one frame so what are the important points of today's class early humans were called as hominids very soon they developed into homo erectus erectus means they learned to stand straight upright and they could turn around and move in all directions why because early men looked more like apes or they belong to the family of primates more like chimpanzees or monkeys they were bent forward walking on four limbs but now he could stand erect and walk on his two legs right then this early men were found mainly where in africa the first man the early man lived in africa then who were the most important of all of them the java men the peking men and the heidelberg men right then we moved on to stone age stone age is the period 
where they were metal was not used and all the equipments or tools or weapons were made out of stone what are the four stone ages stone ages again broadly divided into four the paleolithic or the old stone age paleolithic is a greek word palo means old lithos means stone therefore it is popularly called as old stone age people mainly led a nomadic life they were hunter hunters and went about gathering food and they led a nomadic life right but they were skillful artists because they did many cave paintings depicting pictures of mother goddess hunting scenes okay and so on some of the important sites of the paleolithic age are the bhim betaga the pratapgarh adamgarh and so on and then what did we study about the paleolithic age the most important invention of the paleolithic age was what fire was invented man could not speak clearly he used to make more of growling sounds his speech was not clear but the ability of speech slowly developed during the paleolithic age right and what happened and his vocabulary was very limited then moving on to the middle stone age it is popularly called the period of transition why because transition means change it is a period of change from old stone age to new stone age from paleolithic age to neolithic age it connects or bridges the gap between the old stone age and the new stone age therefore we call it as a period of transition so which which period is popularly called as a period of transition the mesolithic age and there were many remarkable or positive changes that occurred in the environment or in the climatic changes of the earth the earth became more warmer and drier many um, grain bearing see uh, um, plants grew and man started to eat the seeds or the grains of these plants in the form of rice barley and wheat and slowly gradually over a period of time he learned the art of farming or agriculture was invented towards the end of the mesolithic age but this became a major occupation in the neolithic thanks for watching my video please do put up with me and do follow for the next class that's all for today bye bye and have a good day